In the remote Sierra Madre Mountains of northwest Mexico lies Copper Canyon, a rugged region home to a tribe called the Tarahumara, the running people. The Tarahumara have inhabited this terrain for 500 years. Their name comes from their ability to run superhuman distances without running shoes. How do they do it? How do the Terrahumera run these superhuman distances? Could diet be the answer? Today I am talking about the Tarahumara indigenous Indians of northern Mexico. Uh, this is going to be a short video. Basically I want to show a clip of these people. and. Um, the point of this video is to debunk the opinion of many nutritionists in the nutritional sphere today who are of the belief that we have absolutely no need for carbohydrates, which I think is a farce. We have different needs for carbohydrates. If you come from ancestry which consumed little to no carbohydrate like the Inuit who are on 100% raw meat walrus diet, sure you may not need as many carbohydrates, but if you come from someone like a Tarahumara Indian, like many Mexicans, then you may need a very high amount of, carbo of carbohydrates in the diet in order to thrive. Now these Tarahumara Indians, they're on a 95% carbohydrate diet, much of that coming from beans and squash and corn tortilla. And what they're very popular and famous for is their ability to run 286 miles in one go. Now that's incredible. They're the best long distance endurance athletes in the world. Um, and I think that, you know, them running like this for generations contributes to their athletic abilities. Uh, as does their indigenous lifestyle, you know, bare feet on the earth, under the sun, living natural lives. But most definitely also, it's the high carbohydrate diet. If you are an athlete, you are very much familiar with um, how carbohydrates can provide such explosive energy. Uh, whereas fats, they don't provide explosive energy, but they provide this uh, well-burning, easy-burning fuel uh, that doesn't really have these highs and lows and it can burn a long time kind of like a log on a campfire whereas carbohydrates are like uh, small sticks they need to be replenished often but they when you burn them they give you this explosive energy so I'm going to show a clip of these people the Tarahumara Indians um, I hope you guys enjoy it and again the point of this is imagine telling someone of those kinds of genes, Mexican genes, northern Mexican genes, telling them that they have no need for carbohydrates and to go on a very high fat diet. You're going to harm them. And I've consulted with a lot of people like this. They go on one of the two extremes. They either go on extreme vegan diets and then they get autoimmune disorders and celiac from all the grains uh, destroying their intestine. Um, and on the other hand, these people who go on very high fat, low carb diets, and it's mainly women, they lose their menstruation and they get too skinny and they, they shrivel apart. And they also develop all forms of uh, sensitivities to many foods. They develop many food allergies. So be careful. There's a lot of nutritional dogma. You know, you may have a 50 year old guy on testosterone replacement therapy telling you he dropped all food but only eats in and out meat, burger patties, and that it's the holy grail for everybody. It's just dogma. Be very careful. Another interesting side note here. I remember going to a Brazilian steakhouse like six years ago. And I befriended one of the workers there because I would go so often. And um, he was a Mexican guy, uh, Mexican born. He had broken English and he was serving me meat. And he said, you must really like meat. I said, yeah, I do. I love red meat. And he flexed his bicep. He was a very strong built uh, man. He was maybe 50. And I told him, wow, this must be from all of the free steak they give you here. And he laughed and said, no, I'm vegetarian. This is all from corn tortilla. So. Not everything is black and white, guys. Be very careful. I hope you guys enjoy the clip. Take care. During a 26-mile race, an average marathon runner will burn around 2,600 calories. To ensure this distance, their bodies need to consume large amounts of carbohydrates, like those found in sports drinks. Carbohydrates are stored as glycogen in the muscles and are gradually converted to energy. But on a 435 mile run, it is estimated that the Terrahumera can burn up to a staggering 43,000 calories. Where do they get this energy? John McDougall studied the Terrahumera's diet. He was astonished at what he found. They drink like crazy, particularly at harvest time. 
During harvests and before races, the Tarahumara consume large amounts of corn beer called Tesquino. Could this be the key to their extraordinary endurance? They actually may be increasing their hydration status and their glycogen status with this corn beer. It's very high in carbohydrate and the alcohol content is low. It's actually been estimated that it would take about four liters to get intoxicated using their corn beer or their corn beverage. So if you think about it, the amount of carbohydrates that would come with that and the amount of just simple fluid load would be very high. Diabetes, Tarahumara living in a traditional way within Copper Canyon, the researchers at the University of Oregon found virtually no diabetes within that group. So I started to become really curious about the way that we've eaten for thousands of years and the eating traditions that have been passed down generation to generation because it made sense that these were the diets that were preserved because they used foods that went together, that were in season, and that also made us feel good, that made us feel healthy. When you actually spend time down there within Copper Canyon and look at how each of their homesteads are set up, and they're very remote, these homesteads, but you actually look at the vegetation that's growing around uh, one of their homes, some of it which is wild and some of it which is cultivated, you realize that in fact these plants have incredible medicinal qualities. Um, and uh, researchers from the University of Mexico went down and picked about 200 indigenous plants that grow in that area and found that they, believe it or not, had sugar, blood sugar lowering properties, so had, had a hypoglycemic effect. The Tarahumara actually surrounded by this pharmacy that's keeping them healthy. The Tarahumara are primarily vegetarians. They primarily eat corn and beans for a majority of their calories. Uh, probably 90% of their diet is corn and beans. They eat seasonally. In addition to their corn and beans that they grow in the fields, they're wild harvesting a lot of fruits and nuts and vegetables that grow wild in the canyon. So even in this very rugged remote canyon, they eat dozens of different plants and have a very nutritious, varied diet. The Tarahumara are eating lots of very, very unrefined grains just as they come out of the earth. They have access to a lot of high phenolic, healthy foods, garden fresh foods that they grow. So they kind of turned uh, the food pyramid on its head. And really the bottom of their food pyramid is things like spices and, and then obviously using whole grains and beans. And the meat is really used as a spice because it's precious. And when you think about it, animal protein flavored, the smallest amount can go a really long way. The key to it really is this idea of using the three sisters or the tres hermanas as the backbone of the cooking. So the squash, um, and the beans and the indigenous corn, which is, by the way, really different from our corn. It really is the traditional ZMAs, the little gnarled kernels of corn. Then the, the, the kernels themselves have much, are much, much higher in a whole assortment of nutrients, including B vitamins, and also lower in sugar, by the way, much lower in sugar. The heritage corn that the Tarahumara eat and other indigenous cultures eat, which is not genetically modified, which is not you know, plumped up with pesticides, is super high in this nutrient called phenols which again, I was unaware of until I started looking at the Tarahumara culture. But the, the benefit of phenols is it's a natural antioxidant and it's also a uh, natural anti-inflammatory. If you're taking corn and trying to turn it into something that is a mash that you can use to actually make a tortilla with or what they call the nistamal, um, you're not gonna get something that's highly refined or highly processed with this matate, with this carved out stone and then a smaller stone. And as a result, the food that you're gonna get at the end of the day is gonna be a pretty unprocessed, pretty high fiber, pretty whole grain, pretty slow release food. These tortillas are, they, well, first of all, they're incredibly filling. One of them is enough for a meal, but they're also much more complex in flavor, partly because of the traditional uh, types of corn that are used, but they're much more nutty. They really feel almost like they have more uh, spice in them where no spices are added. It's just the flavors is really quite complex. Um, and uh, when you look at the amount of nutrients in them, they have a lot more um, of B vitamins, a lot more protein. They grind the limestone and they boil it with some of the corn that they harvest. The heat and the, and the limestone release niacin. The limestone also has a lot of calcium, so they get a lot of calcium and niacin. Some protein, because corn has protein, a lot, a lot of very, very complex carbohydrates through that. So they grind the the boiled mixture. The tarahumara tortilla takes a lot of work. You grind it down to masa, you mix it with water, you uh, then hand pat it, you put it on a grill, which you have to watch and supervise. Because if you ever try to do it yourself, I guarantee you, you will screw it up for at least 30 years before you finally get it right. But that amount of work itself is time intensive, it's energy intensive. So it creates a culture of food appreciation. 